Hello everyone, Pastor Wagner again. Welcome to my weekly video blog. Well, as they say, it is the season as Christmas is approaching. And generally around this time of year, somebody will invariably ask what I'm going to do for Christmas. And when I tell them that I don't celebrate Christmas, uh, that usually elicits some kind of a question as to, well, why not? That's kind of strange. Most people, especially Christians and preachers especially, would celebrate Christmas. And I usually answer that question with, I say, well, do you want the long answer or the short answer? And most people generally say, well, I'll take the short answer because, you know, nobody wants a lengthy explanation of something and religious topics tend to be controversial anyway. So my short answer is, well, the Bible forbids it. Well, that generally elicits a question for the long answer because if it's a Christian, they'll say, well, wait a minute, or anybody for that matter, wait a minute. Where does the Bible say that? Because I've never heard of that before. I say, well, that's the long answer. And did, would you like to hear it? And sometimes they want to hear it. Sometimes they don't. But if they say, yeah, then I usually go through this spiel that I'm about ready to go through with you to explain why I don't celebrate Christmas. And it would go something like this. Well, that's a good question. Where does the Bible forbid celebrating Christmas? But I guess a more important question would be, where does the Bible even talk about Christmas? Is the word Christmas even used in the Bible? Did any of the disciples or the apostles celebrate Christmas? Did Jesus celebrate Christmas? Did anybody do it in the Bible? Well, if you look through the Bible, you will indeed find that the word Christmas is absent. It's not found in there anywhere. Not only is the word not found, the whole concept is not found. Nowhere will you find anybody, any of the apostles, the disciples, anybody celebrating Jesus's birthday in the Bible with the exception of the actual event when it happened. When the shepherds were abiding, watching their fields by night, they saw the star and all that kind of thing, and they came to worship the newborn Christ child. And then wise men later, and I guess the wise men were the ones that saw the star, wise men a couple of years later came and brought gifts to Christ. And you, the Bible says that he was a young child at that time. You can check that out. So the Christmas narrative of the three wise men coming at the birth didn't ever happen. It was, you know, possibly as late as two years afterwards. But anyway, all that aside, that's the only time you're going to see anybody, quote, celebrating the birthday of Christ. Now, you would think if God wanted us to celebrate the birthday of Christ, that he would have, number one, told us when it is. And number two, he would have probably told us how he wants us to do it. You know, you, you would think that maybe you'd find it. Oh, I don't know, a verse in one of Paul's epistles that says, Now, brethren, on the five and twentieth day of the last month of the year, I want you to go out in the forest, and I want you to cut yourself a tree, and I want you to bring it into your house, and I want you to deck it with silver and gold, and fasten it with hammer and nail that it move not. And I want you to put white lights on it, which will be symbolic of Christ, who is the light of the world. And the evergreen tree would represent the eternality of God, brethren. I want you to put this in your house, and I want you to give each other gifts. Don't, don't give Jesus gifts. He doesn't need any, but give each other gifts for his birthday. Yes, and I want you to burn the Yule log, brethren, and I want you to drink eggnog, and I want you to throw big office parties and, and have a bunch of drunk people running around naked. Yes, that's, what I, that's how I want you to celebrate the birthday of our Savior, brethren. Yes, and with holly. Don't forget that. And mistletoe, of course. Yes. So make sure to do this, brethren. And especially make sure it is at the winter solstice, brethren. That's very important. But, you know, we don't read anything about that, do we? I'm kind of being facetious, obviously, but there's really no mention of it, is there? No. And the reason is that Christmas wasn't even around back then. Christmas didn't come about until, well, I don't know, 300 and some years after the birth of Christ. The disciples and the apostles never celebrated it. So where did Christmas come from? That's a good question. Well, if it's not Christian and if it's not biblical, where did it come from? Well, it came a long time prior to the coming of Christ. You see, around this time of year, pagan peoples, you know, long before the birth of Christ, noticed something. They noticed that as the year progresses from June until December, the days get shorter and shorter and shorter. And it appears that the sun is dying at that time. And then it happens up until about the 21st or 22nd of December at the winter solstice. And at that point, the sun is at its least, it, it, its lowest strength. The sun is in the sky the, the least amount of time and the days are the shortest. And the pagan peoples thought that this was 
this cycle of nature, the sun had died, and then they noticed a few days later, maybe around December 25th, that, boy, the sun has regained his strength and the days are getting longer again. And they worship that holiday, the winter solstice, as the birth of the unconquered sun. It was called Natalis Solus Invicti. It was called the Feast of Saturn or Saturnalia. And they did these things. So you say, well, what does that have to do with Christmas? Well, I'll get into that in a second. But so what they did was they, they celebrated this. And then what happened was the Catholic Church came along trying to convert the pagans, just like I talked about Halloween a couple weeks ago. The Catholic Church, in an effort to convert the pagans, said, well, you know, the, the pagans aren't going to give up. They don't want to give up these fun holidays. I mean, boy, you know, office Christmas parties are fun, running around drunk and naked and all this kind of stuff. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to do that? So they said, you know what we'll do? If you can't beat them, we'll join them. And what we'll do is we will bring in Saturnalia and Natalis Solus Invicti. We'll bring it into Catholicism, into the Catholic Church, but we'll just change the name of it. And, and instead of calling it that, we'll call it Christ's Mass or Christmas. And then the pagans really don't have to change anything. They can do what they've always done. We'll just call it Christ's Mass. We'll say it's the birthday of the S-O-N son, not the S-U-N son. And, you know, just give it Christian terminology and we'll Christianize it. Why not? And I'm not making this stuff up. I'll just give you a couple of quotes here from what actually happened. This is from the Source of All Wisdom and Knowledge from Wikipedia. I speak in jest, obviously. Um, but there's lots. Uh, I have some Encyclopedia Britannica quotes, and if you do any research on your own, the internet is full of this stuff. You'll find out all kinds of stuff that you might never have known about the origin of Christmas. But anyway, here we go. It says, in Roman times, the best-known winter festival was Saturnalia, which was popular throughout Italy. Saturnalia was a time of general relaxation, feasting, merrymaking, and cessation, cessation of formal rules. Holly was also considered the key symbolic plant of the god Saturn and festival. I wonder where deck the halls with boughs of holly comes from. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't come from Jesus. Hate to tell you. It included the making and giving of small presents. Well, that didn't come about with the birthday of Jesus either. That was long predating it. Including small dolls for children and candles for adults. During Saturnalia, business was postponed and even slaves feasted. Kind of sounds like most businesses nowadays that take off the week between Christmas and New Year's. There's nothing new under the sun. There was drinking, gambling, and singing, and even public nudity. My, sounds like an office Christmas party, doesn't it? It was the, quote, best of days, according to the poet Catullus. Saturnalia honored the god Saturn and began on December, tw or December 17th. The festival gradually lengthened until the late Republican period when it was seven days, December 17 through 23. In imperial times, Saturnalia was shortened to five days. Here's another quote from Wikipedia. This is about the Roman festival, Natalis Solus Invicti. It says, the Romans held a, fe held a festival on December 25th called Natalis, or called Dies Natalis Solus Invicti, the quote, birthday of the unconquered sun. The use of the title Sol Invictus allowed several solar deities to be worshipped collectively. Oh my, weren't they nice and ecumenical back then, huh? Nothing's changed. Including Ella, Gobble, a Syrian sun god, Sol, the god of the emperor Aurelian, AD 270 to 274, and Mithras, the soldier, a soldier's god of Persian, Persian origin. Emperor Elagabalus, uh, 218 through 222, introduced the festival, and it reached the height of its popularity under Aurelian, who promoted it as an empire-wide holiday. So these things go way back, have nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. So how in the world did this end up being Christmas? Well, here we have it. Here's out of the horse's mouth itself, the Catholic Encyclopedia. If you ever want any anti-Catholic material, go right to the Catholic Encyclopedia. They condemn themselves on a regular basis. It's a wonderful document to have. Uh, the Catholic Encyclopedia says, The well-known solar feast of Natalis Solus Invicti, Nativity of the Unconquered Sun, celebrated on 25 December, has a strong claim on the responsibility of our December date, speaking of Christmas. They admit that it was Natalis Solus Invicti, and that's why we have Christmas. They just changed the name. Here we go again. Uh, this is from the World Book Encyclopedia, from a secular source. In AD 354, Pope Liberius of Rome ordered the people to celebrate on December 25th. He probably chose this date because the people of Rome already observed it as the Feast of Saturn, celebrating the birthday of the Sun, S-U-N. 
Christians honored Christ instead of Saturn as the light of the world. Isn't that nice? So you might say, well, you know, what could be wrong with that? I mean, what, what could be wrong with taking some evil pagan celebration and changing it to a Christian one and Christianizing it? What could be wrong with that? And people had those ideas. Here's a quote from Pope Gregory of Augustine in 597 AD. He said, do not destroy the temples of the English gods. Change them to Christian churches. Do not forbid the harmless customs which have been associated with the old religions. Consecrate them to Christian uses. Oh, you know, those harmless customs like burning your children in the fire. Don't worry about those things. Just consecrate them to Christian uses. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea, isn't it? So right there out of the horse's mouth, the Catholic Church admits to doing this, taking these pagan holidays and Christianizing them or Catholicizing them, we would say. So the problem with that, though, is that the Bible forbids it. And that's why my short answer to the, answer, uh, short answer to the question of why I don't celebrate Christmas is the Bible forbids it. Go back to the Old Testament, and then I'll give you some New Testament ones as well. Whenever Israel was going to go into the land of Canaan, when they were going to inherit the Promised Land, there were a bunch of wicked nations in there, and God knew that if they went in there and if they adopted those customs, or they would at least they would definitely have the the opportunity and the temptation to adopt those customs and to worship God the way that those nations worshipped Him. And He said, "Don't do it. Do not do it." Deuteronomy twelve twenty nine through thirty two. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. That is precisely what the Catholic Church did. They would go into new lands, they would proselytize them, and in order to convert the pagans, they'd say, well, how do these nations serve their gods? We will serve our God likewise. We're just going to change the name. That's exactly what they did. But what does God say? Verse 31, Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fire to their gods. You don't consecrate wicked, pagan religion and call it Christian. You don't do that. The things that the Gentiles sacrifice, we read in 1 Corinthians 10, the things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice unto devils and not unto God. And Paul says, I would not that you have fellowship with devils. Verse 32, What things soever I command you observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. God says, you do what I tell you to do, and you don't add anything in there, like Christmas, like Easter, like Halloween, and you don't take anything from it either. You just do it just how I said, and you don't worship me the way that the nations worship their gods. People say, well, my, that's kind of harsh. Yeah, well, that's Christianity. If you don't like it, go find another religion. You don't want to worship God the way that he does? Well, then go do it your own way, but don't pretend that it's Christian. Look at what God told Jeremiah here. Jeremiah wrote, he said in verse 10, Jeremiah 10, 2 through 4, you tell me what this sounds like to you. Jeremiah 10, 2 through 4, Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Oh, like maybe the sun dying towards the end of the year at the winter solstice, and then being dismayed at that, and, having a, and then when the sun re, rebirths, then having some kind of celebration of that. Yeah, don't do that. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. My, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? They deck it, or decorate. Go look at the definition. To deck is to decorate. They deck it with silver and gold. Kind of sounds like tinsel, doesn't it? They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. Now, what does that sound like to you? What does that sound like? My, it sounds very similar to people going in the forest and cutting themselves a green tree, bringing it into their house, fastening it down with hammers and nails so it doesn't fall over, decorating it with silver and gold and with candles and such. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. This is speaking of making an idol, but boy, doesn't it apply to cutting a green tree, bringing it into your house, and decorating it. That's exactly what it's talking about, doing such things. It's idolatry. It's idolatry. And God says, learn not the way of the heathen. Don't do that, God says. And you say, well, those are all Old Testament examples. Yeah, like God only prohibited idolatry in the Old Testament, but he's cool with it now. No, he's not cool with it. God still hates idolatry. 
Look over here in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. God is just as abhorred, abhors this kind of thing in the New Testament just like he did back there in the Old Testament. It says in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 14, Be not equally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what concord hath and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What part hath Christ with Saturnalia? What part hath Christ with Natalis Solus and Victi? What part? None. He doesn't have any part of it. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. It says in Revelation, come out of her, my people. This is a Catholic pagan, superstitious holiday. It is not Christian. Do you know that Christians didn't celebrate Christmas until about 150 years ago or so? Christians, I'm talking about Christians, Baptists, and even a lot of most Protestants did not celebrate Christmas. It was illegal in this country way back in the 1600s. It was illegal in this country to celebrate Christmas. John Calvin made it illegal in Geneva, I believe it was, to celebrate Christmas. They realized it was a pagan, wicked holiday that Christians shouldn't celebrate. I'm not for laws, banning it, or anything like that, but just to show you what the culture thought of it. The Christian culture in this country a long time ago banned it as illegal. You were fined for celebrating Christmas. They knew it was a Catholic pagan holiday. They knew it wasn't Christian. Somehow that's changed. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the verse that I quoted here a minute ago. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20 Paul says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would that ye should and I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partaker of the partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of the devils. You can't do it. You can't have it both ways. You cannot bring in paganism into Christianity and claim to be worshiping the Son of God and honoring his birth. You can't do that. Those pagan holidays were worshiped unto devils and not to God. You cannot worship the devil and claim you're worshiping Jesus Christ and his birth. You may not know. You may not remember what those pagan holidays were, but God remembers God remembers those heathen, pagan, devil-worshipping nations and all that they were doing. God knows. You may not remember, but he does. We have to keep the ordinances as delivered. You have to do it the way that God says if you want to please him. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 2, Paul says, Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Do it the way that God says. Paul never delivered us an ordinance to celebrate the birthday of Christ on December 25th. Now, we ought to celebrate Christ's birth every day. Honor him as your Savior, as the Son of God, for saving your miserable soul. Yeah, we ought to do that every day. But there is no special celebration, and especially a pagan holiday, Christianized. There is no such thing. Jesus said in Matthew 28, in verse 20, he said to do it the way that he said to do it. Matthew 28 and verse 20, the disciples were supposed to go and baptize all nations. In verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you in all way, even unto the end of the world. All things. Teaching them all things whatsoever. All things says you can't leave anything out whatsoever, says you can't add anything to it. Do it just the way he said it. And he certainly never commanded us to celebrate Christmas or anything of the like. So I think that's enough. I think that's enough for today. I hope I've given you enough information as to know why I don't celebrate Christmas and why our church doesn't celebrate Christmas. And I hope you'll consider these things. I hope you'll search the scriptures to see if these things are so. And I hope you'll go do a little bit of research on your own to prove all things, to find out the origin of this pagan holiday called Christmas. And I hope that you'll consider these things and that you might repent and not celebrate these kind of pagan holidays anymore, pretending to celebrate the birthday of Christ. So thanks for your kind and patient attention, and I'll talk to you again next week, Lord willing.
Bye for now.